going to drill a hole right now through the Yukon River ice so I can get some water. I'm also going to be testing the thickness of the ice right now. I can tell a lot about what's going to happen at breakup by observing ice conditions. Our life revolves around this river, but this time of year it can be extremely stressful. The potential for the water to come in here at a very high level is certainly there. We saw what happened in 2009 when it wasn't even predicted to be a bad breakup. Let's see how thick this ice is. that destroyed our home. That's how thick the ice was a week before breakup. And that's really bad. Load ice, man. Right now we have a couple of really bad omens. The first is too much snow up in the high country. The second is too thick of ice. And the third is the ice is still really solid. This is looking to be a really bad one this year. Our home is only 35 feet above this level. We have the potential for a lot of serious flooding on our property this year. To be successful at living out here, you have to accept it doesn't always go down on your schedule. If there's life throwing you a curveball, you better learn how to swing. Been here a little over a decade. I've been trying to buy this camp since I've been started this thing, and over the past uh, few months, something's come up that's definitely going to affect the rest of my life and uh, my ability to stay here at Kavik. The owners of the camp, they want now to sell the camp. I want to purchase. For 10 years now, I've been saving my money, but if I can't get enough scratch put together, somebody else is going to buy it, and uh, I'm flat on my butt somewhere trying to find a new career and a new life. Everything I do here, I've taught myself. Every chore is something that I've learned over these past 10 years. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's good, cold, or terrible. I mean, I still got to do it. I mean, there's never a good time for a breakdown, but probably 20 to 30 mile an hour winds here. So you're, you're talking 50s, 60s, below zero on your skin. only takes a couple of minutes before you start to freeze. Belt's done, but I always carry a spare belt. You just never know. This is what it's supposed to look like, and uh, that's what I got. I mean, this is what's left. Make sure everything's all clear. It's got to be 20 or 30 below. I don't know. I'd say we got just a few minutes in these temps before your skin cells start to freeze. So I got to get this done because I'm I'm going to be in trouble here if I don't. I'm trying to get the belt. It's over the one pulley, but it's kind of frozen. I got to get it to go over this one. Yes, it's on. Scary to think that uh, I couldn't get it fixed in the middle of a blizzard. It'll kill you. I up 
the ante by playing my A game. Nature's up in her ante by throwing hers back. As a hunter, if you go out with an idea of what you'd like to do, and then you end up doing what you have to do. When we have an opportunity at a certain time, we take it. Well, this is the last chance that we have to get some uh, she fish up before the flies come. Pretty soon it's going to warm up. Um, if we wait till later and we go fishing like in a couple more weeks, we have to deal with flies, and then you really have to watch your meats a lot. So for us right now, this is the best time with the best weather and the best days are here to go get the best fish. And that's what we're up to. We want to go fishing down to Kobuk Lake. Um, it's a pretty popular spot. We're getting some brackish water fish called chief fish. Chief fish is like a sweet white meat. It's a really good tasting fish and it's a change of diet for us right now. To us, it's shopping. We're going to go to the store. The store's got new stuff in it. We're coming home with something different to eat. It's like a good spot. Well, let's throw down an auger and give it a try. And if we start pulling fish up, we'll make camp. Okay. Sounds like a deal. We're here on the lake and uh, we're where the fish are. And we need to find a nice deep spot or a channel. And uh, we need to throw some holes down. And if we don't catch fish, we'll just keep jigging and keep jigging and keep jigging, making holes, making holes, making holes. That's kind of the way it goes.
were just taking a lot more precautions to the similar situation we've got going on this year. It's going to be a bad breakup. Yeah, it's coming, Tab. Don't worry. Today we're gonna we're gonna get the dogs moved up to Eagle. The Yukon River is gonna start getting really soft. And my uh, nice firm trails that I've been using all year are deteriorating very quickly now. So I'm feeling like this is kind of the last day to try and get the dogs up to Eagle. Otherwise, it would be quite a slog. Hey, Bree, want to go to town? Huh? Got no choice. This is kind of an unusual event. I've never had to move my dogs up to Eagle before. We're really feeling nervous about the ice going out this year and uh, flooding our property. Kate's going to take six dogs with her on the sled, and I'm going to take the other 18 with my snow machine. Kate's going to stay up there with them during breakup, and uh, I'm heading back to Calico to look after all of our property. We'll just have to play the wait and see game at this point. Hey guys, hop up! gone yesterday the weather was predicting for it to be cold this morning we would have had a good hard trail instead we've got water underneath the snow now and there's no support on the trail to hold the dogs up so we're just gonna have to slog our way up the eagle It's rough on me having to leave for a breakup. I wish I could be home. It's just a high stress day. I can't stop shaking. Pull, Sally, pull! Good job, guys. Come on, up, up. We're lucky to have this. This is my first house I built here in Eagle, and I lived in this before I started developing our place down at Calico Bluff. And so, if I have to spend the night in Eagle, we have a place here that we can spend the night. That was a hot trip, huh? Well, that was nerve wracking. Hey, guys. Well done, Gilligan. Well done, all. Come on over here. This is your new home. You're such a good girl. You did a good job today. Oh, I think that's everybody's. This has been a rough day, but I do have to look after the dogs, and that's the most important thing. Oh, my angel. But my heart will be at home. So it's a bittersweet day for me, and I don't know how long I'm going to be here, and that's going to be the hardest part for me. You did a good job today. A little okay. bit frustrating. Yeah. It's going to be really hard when Andy leaves here now shortly. See ya. Love you. Love you, too. You're going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. It's going to be really hard to be separated that long, for one thing. And uh, just worry about all the work that he's got to do down there to finish up getting ready, and I can't be there to help. And, um, I just hope he'll be okay. I hope that all this fuss and bother is for nothing. I really hope I have a home to go home to. 
lot of patience. That's what you got to have to live up this way. This is the Arctic. It may be technically a desert, but we got lots of water flying around.
This is where I cut firewood here on this island. We're on sort of a tight little slough of the river here. This is a backwater, a flood channel. This is the first tree I want to take today. Well, here we're targeting dead standing spruce. It's already dried, it's ready to go. Get this home, throw it right in the wood stove. When you burn exclusively firewood to heat your home, you need a lot of firewood. So what you do to get the wood is you come out and you girdle these trees, which is the marks that you see here. Girdling it, it cuts the xylem of the tree, it exposes it, it kills the tree, and then the tree sits out here in the woods, it dries standing, and a few years later when you come back to cut them, it's already dry and ready to go. Always got to pay attention when you get one hung up like that. See, there's that loose top up there. They call that a widow maker. You don't want that to fall on you. No, really though, because that it's it's gonna roll this way. It's not like a. It is gonna fall here in the next cut or two. Like I may have the rest of this piece at a That tree was not leaning in an advantageous direction. Well, I got a full load in my sled. I got several piles back there with some more wood. I'm gonna uh, haul this back to camp. I just came out here, traveled down the river a short distance from my home, cut some firewood. I filled up my sled. I made several other piles along the slough. So uh, that all worked out. I knocked over a couple trees here and got them all limbed up, bucked up in lengths. I'm gonna haul them back to my camp, buck them up, split them, throw them in the woodshed there, and we're good to go. Wood to me is, is, is one of the most valuable commodities there are out here in the bush. I mean, it's how I heat my house. What I just did here is basically everybody else in the world going out to their, to their desk job, working their week, punching their clock, and then giving it to the heating oil man for the winter to pay for however you heat your house, propane, heating oil, however. I'd much rather cut out the middleman and just go and get my own, uh, my own heating fuel here. I've always had a way with nature. I work in harmony with it, not against it. I'm part of the circle of life. trying to find a new career and a new life. And I 
wanted to ask each of you and Jen, I mean, we're a family, even if I do run away, but, uh, you know, see what your feelings are on me buying the place or, or quitting the place. What I want you to do more than anything else is do what's going to make you happy. I don't ever want to do anything to make you sad, but you know I go psycho when I get in town too long. I love you a lot, Mom. I just want you to do what's going to make you happy. All right, I love you, sweetie, and I'll call you in a few days. The enormity of the the decision is, is I mean, it's off the charts. I don't want to lose my home, and I want a chance at this future. I'm going to Fairbanks to buy this place. God willing, I'll come back and be able to introduce it as Susan's Cavic River Camp. I've invested 25 years of my life here, and... This is a place that I have a really strong spiritual connection to, and it's going to take an awful lot for me to give this up. Kate's an eagle now with the dogs. I made it back here. I left Topaz here. I always like to have one dog with me when I'm down here. We're predicting this to be a really bad breakup, and one of the last things I want to do is to put some eye bolts through the beams supporting my house and then tie those off to the base of trees. In the flood in 2009, every building on our property floated and moved. Some of them moved 75, 80 feet away from their original spot. What I'm a little nervous about is if all these buildings start floating, they're going to end up going back out with the water. This rope here is weighted for five tons. Unless the ice actually hits the house, if the whole house was floating, I'd be able to pull it with this rope. It's like having a large boat in the water. There's not a lot of friction there. So I think I'll get one here, go around the other side, see if I can't get one over there to some more trees that way, and that'll keep it from moving sideways. And then I'll have to go and try and figure out a way to attach to the back of the house and go back that way. So I think if I can do three points, I'll be in pretty good shape here. So the house is secure. We try and get a few hours sleep. We'll probably go to sleep tonight with the window open so I can listen and hear if something starts happening. We're coming down to the wire. It's been a long winter. It's been a lot of fun, got a lot of trapping done. Got a lynx here. A lot of the stuff out there hunting and fishing is uh, is luck, to be honest. But where the skill comes in is in seizing opportunity. What the f***? There's a muskrat right there. You know, Alaska's a harsh place. Either you like it or you don't. It's the only place that I could live. I wouldn't trade this life for anything. This is the lifestyle I choose to live. It's not the right or wrong way to live. It's just the way I choose. It's been a lot of fun. Got a lot of trapping done. Caught a lot of fur. Had a great time. Got out in the country. But spring is officially here. It's time for me to get ready for what I really do for a living, which is uh, be a hunting guide. Alaska has a rich tradition of uh, guiding and outfitting for big game. There's nothing I'm more proud of than being a guide and everything that goes with that. I'm going to be taking uh, six grizzly bear hunters over the next month. I have my first client coming in today. I need to put together a camp. I need to ready his guest cabin that he'll be staying in and uh, head down and pick him up. These are two of my most important pieces of guiding gear. This is a 60 power spotting scope. I can look at a brown bear's head from a long range and know if it's a mature bear or not. My second piece of gear that's really important is my guide rifle. This gun has been with me for my entire guiding career, and it's uh, it's been involved in the harvest of many, many bears and moose and sheep. I'm kind of excited and nervous all at once. It's the first hunt of the spring, and I'm going to hop in the truck and head down and pick up my first client of the year. This isn't just a job or an occupation. Every day, I have to do something that benefits my household and my family. I've got to keep them warm. I've got to keep them fed. Well, 
Well, I guess we're going to go fishing again today. The fish weren't biting yesterday, but, um, you know, that's fishing, so we're going to give it another try. We could get a sled load. We might get nothing, but we won't know if we don't try, so we're off. their holes where people have been lucky then we're lucky we don't have to dig so deep the fish move you know like this could be the hottest hole that there is for a whole day and tomorrow there'd be nothing at all in the same manner the holes it didn't produce today might just be the hottest places to be tomorrow so we don't know until we try just keep trying oh there we go here we go oh dick dalek I don't like getting hooked. I always try to stun them. Oh boy. That's a good meal right there. Oh, I got one! Yes! Good one, too. a couple of small tiktolic and um if you had to go buy the equivalent in the store it probably could run you three or four hundred bucks so um coming out here and doing this is uh definitely worth our time and our effort and we actually save money by buying gas instead of food at the store well that's quite a few meals right there all right yeah it looks like it yum when we look at uh, spring coming on we see a change of seasons coming and with a change of season comes a change of taste there's something else to hunt every day there's something new to gather we're gonna jump on our snow machines and we're gonna head off to Narvik and have ourselves a nice little trip home with some smiles on our faces. There's a big difference between a fresh fish and a frozen fish. The fresh fish is what we got on board. And when you get knocked down, you either stay there and cry or get your ass back up and make it work. And this has been a long time coming. I am in Fairbanks. The only thing standing between me and my dream of owning Kavik, this right here, a check needs to be written to, to purchase it. This is what it all boils down to. Get down there, sign a document, shake some hands, light a stogie and sip a single malt and breathe. Start the next chapter of my life. It's a huge step for me. It's no small feat to be 50 and finally purchase your own lighthouse so you can make that light shine for everybody to see. Hey there. Good to see you. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. I'm nervous as a little cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Cheers. Success. <laughs> I feel good. I feel shaky. It hasn't sunk in yet. This all started, I was in Fairbanks, dead of winter, busted leg, having surgery, and trying to get back home. Holy what was that? I absolutely think it's detestable that somebody feels they have the right to come in and change my world without asking. He's down. Oh, man. <laughs> I see a light. I'm back in Fairbanks. Leg is kicked ass, and I'm buying my own home. It's it's a it's a new era for Super Suit. <laughs> Ooh, 
I put 10 years into this place and lost almost all that work, and I don't know what would happen if I lost it again. I don't know if I'd have the resolve to rebuild again. Go take a quick look over the bank here and see if it's coming up. I gotta get some stuff up high. Just woke up, heard sound, it almost sounded like rain. It was kind of a crackly noise. I looked out of the window dreamy-eyed and saw big chunks of ice in the yard. And uh, realized the river was breaking up. I could hear the ice cracking and popping. This is looking to be a really bad one this year. scared for his life to be honest i can't replace him if all my buildings float and i lose everything we have to really think seriously about whether we want to continue to live here if the ice comes it's the end it'll just be splinters so i really hope i have a home to go home to it's kind of a last minute big scramble here I was hoping I was going to get a night's sleep last night, but that didn't happen. I got to get in the house and get some more stuff up high. There's all my electronics. Storing all my water jugs in here so they don't float away. So I got water in case I'm flooded here. I'll get a few upstairs. That's one of the biggest issues when you get stranded is you realize you'd have no water to drink. We're just gonna have to wait and see what Mother Nature throws at us now. I woke up and I thought I heard it raining out and it just didn't sound right, it sounded like the sound of raindrops or something on the tin roof and it kind of took me a minute to kind of wake up and first thought was oh it's raining i gotta go cover stuff up and then i looked out the window and saw big chunks of ice here right up on the bank i was like oh i could see the the ice it looks like it must have started right up against the shoreline because the ice out between here and the islands was uh, still solid but it was just starting to break up So uh, the river's moving really good out in the main channel right now. Uh, I'm looking out there and I can see it moving probably 10 or 12 miles an hour. Water came up about five feet in less than a minute here when it breached upriver about maybe 200 yards. So uh, there's a lot of water piling up back behind this. I hope, I hope it keeps moving. All right, well, I just came up on my roof because that's my best vantage point. I'm seeing open water starting to show up and I'm seeing the ice thinning out in the main channel right now. So I think the first big push has gone through right now and uh, that's exactly what I like to see. So we're gonna see here when this open water appears, it might peel off these large pieces out in front. We'll see what happens here, but uh, feeling like we're through the through the worst part of it right now so I'm starting to relax a little bit more it's a way of life this isn't just a job or an occupation every day I have to do something that benefits my household and my family I've got to keep them warm I've got to keep them fed Oh, that's big. 
Where was lots of fun catching this and almost get away? Well, it's the first she fish we've had fresh since uh, we stopped netting fish in November. Yeah. Nothing like fresh, fresh food. You can get four or five meals out of this one if you include the head. We'll bake the head and eat it separate. We actually had a pretty average year, huh? I'd say. Catching no, fur, catching no, no. fish, catching caribou. Watch your knees, sweetie. You watch where I'm cutting it too. I would say it wasn't too bad of a year. Look, are these eggs? Yeah, Mom. Mom, got eggs. Bad. Look, Daddy, got eggs. Oh, lucky. <laughs> Bonus. Wow, look at those eggs. Oh, well, Mom, we got the liver. You guys can have the rest of the fish. Just leave me the eggs. The liver. Watch out. Might be the last year. I'm just going to go. Bam. Out here, we try to do subsistence hunting and gathering and fishing as much as we can. I'm going to put this in the oven now. Sometimes we don't always have money to go to the store and purchase all the meats and prepared foods that most people have. It's pretty expensive when you try to go to the store, so we pretty much rely on all the stuff that we catch. Ready for dinner, girls? Yeah. Yep. Right on, it's done. Some people say subsistence living is a poor way to live, but I think subsistence is a poor word for a good, healthy living. Looks pretty good. There's a big difference between a fresh fish and a frozen fish. And um, we've got nice, chemical-free, organic fish that we know happen to be wild. It's all about good health and happiness. And that's what we got here today. We ended our fall and started our winter with fishing. And we ended our winter and started our spring with fishing. Almost like poetry. We'll push every day until we can't push any further. Until the time runs out and that's all we can do. Here we go. Come here. Come here, Tope. Mommy's coming. Mommy's coming home. Oh, boy. I talked with Kate last night and she's found out that there's going to be a helicopter in the Eagle area and she's contacted the company and they said that they would be able to do a quick trip to drop her off down here which is going to make her really happy to be home again who's that who's that going to be is that going to be mommy huh? she's managed to find someone to take care of our dogs in Eagle for the next two to three weeks until I can put a boat in Getting Kate back here is going to be a real joy for both of us, and I know she's chomping at the bit to get back here, so it'll be a happy reunion. Who's that, Toop? Is that your mommy? <laughs> hey, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Hey, Keith. Thanks for bringing my woman home. Oh, no problem. <laughs> how you doing, stranger? Yay! <laughs> oh, my God, some good be home. Yeah. Oh. It's good that we got a home. <laughs> so that's what saved us, that big chunk from here down to there. Yeah. It deflected all this stuff. We were pretty lucky. Well, I'd say we got the lottery ticket this year. <laughs> it's because we did all that work to prep. <laughs> if we wouldn't have prepped, we would have been kicked. Well, kicked we're all organized butt. now. We know what to do. Uh, yeah. This has been stressful, but a good ending. And uh, looks like we made it through probably one of the worst breakups that could have happened in this area, unscathed. So, good start of the spring.